All right, today's video is all about the USS Grissom. This is a new 1/350th scale model kit being put out by Polar Lights this winter. Now I'm about halfway through the build. I've built the dome, the platform, and the nacelles, and we put lights in it. So we have lit most of the ship, including some of these navigation lights, all of the saucer and the dome lights, and we've even done some of the navigation beacons on the bottom of the ship. And also the impulse engine hanging underneath there. So we're going to go back in time about eight days ago to look at how this model started and what it took to get it to this point. Now, it's always a little intimidating starting off on a brand new kit, uh, but I'm going to light this up. So that makes the first step light blocking the inside of the ship. Now, whenever I'm light blocking things, I look for things I can put on before I light block. It's always easier to assemble things before anything is painted. So it looks like I'm going to be able to put this rear wall on the back of the platform. And it looks like I'm going to be able to put on uh, these inserts for the cargo bays uh, before I do any light blocking. All right, so those are the inserts for the cargo bays. We're going to glue those in place. The fit here really is nice. Uh, there's no gaps. Everything fits together very well. And I hope it'll still fit well once I have a couple layers of light blocking paint on the ship as well. That little transition there was actually three days. It's been three days of getting this light blocked. And that's something I always forget about lighting ships. There's just a lot of work before you can even start putting the pieces together. So I light blocked it. I had to use gunmetal. My hobby shop was out of black. So it's spraying coats of gunmetal, uh, making sure it's light proof, then spraying lots of light colors of gloss white to get the inside of the ship glossy white. So it's been a while. So I've been looking at what actually lights up on this ship. And the first thing that lights up is this is your impulse engine. It is a clear part that I've airbrushed with clear red and just a housing. And this sits just on the bottom of the platform. Here's that clear part. And here's the housing that goes around it. Now, these circular parts, I can't find any references where they light up, and I can't find any references where other parts of this back engine deck light up. So back here, it looks like it's just going to be this impulse housing. Once again, this is underneath that platform, and there are green and red navigation lights, anti-collision lights, that uh, are lit up. And the way this model works, though, is, is pretty interesting. Uh, they give you a fairly large clear piece, and this is going to be an example of light piping. So we're going to light up this entire piece just to get this navigation light to light up. So we're going to stick an LED right back here where that pre-made hole is, right here. We're going to stick a 3 millimeter LED to make this entire piece glow. We're going to use silver or gunmetal paint to block this entire surface from lighting up, and hopefully that will cause just this light right here to be lit up. And once again, I can't find any other references to say whether anything else lights up here. It looks like the light piping could make these little structures light up, and there's even an additional hole right here to light those. Um, so in that case, you wouldn't paint the entire thing green. You would do just this part in green, leave these clear to be clear lights. Uh, but I can't find any really good reference pictures to show me whether or not those are lit up. Here's the other side. So this is really the same piece. And I've done this one in red for the red lights on the port side. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna put a three millimeter LED behind it, light the entire thing up, paint it silver across the back so it's not lit and hopefully just get a red light on the underside of the platform. To get all that lit up, I have soldered together three LEDs. I'm using a five millimeter LED to light up that impulse engine. I'm going to use these other ones here for those navigation lights. I've put some narrow wires here. They're gonna go down this hole into a pylon, and that's gonna leave these two 
to light up all of our saucer windows. And once again, this really is made for custom lighting systems. So there are two holes right here. I'm gonna take these five millimeter LEDs. I'm going to glue them in just like this to light up this entire structure. And once again, I've got everything gloss white uh, to really reflect and bounce all that light around to hopefully light up all the windows in the top and the bottom of the saucer. And then we're just gonna put the saucer top right above it. All right, I feel like another full day has passed, but now we've got all of our LEDs uh, glued into place. Uh, we have the tails ready to run down this hole. These ones are still loose to be put up into the top of the platform. And the nacelles, super simple. Uh, all they really have are some collision lights. So we tinted the clear plastic red and we just pointed a three millimeter pre-wired LED at each clear part. That's all we're gonna do in this nacelle. And green clear parts on the other one. So no glowing grills, no facade collectors up front to glow red, uh, just some navigation lights. And that's gonna bring us to probably what could be one of the more time consuming parts of this build. And that is all of these window inserts. So this section down here on the bottom has five different inserts that fill it in, plus uh, another insert for this little beacon in front. And our top saucer dome has once again a ton of inserts. And I'm very curious to see how these will work out because I do have uh, at least three layers of paint on all of these parts now. So we'll see how well the clear inserts fit. I'm in the middle of gluing on all of these clear inserts and they're very well done. Um, a lot of these are very specific shapes uh, to do things like have cutouts for the cargo bays. And you can see here that they are all lettered where they go. So 105A is this piece. Uh, 105H is this piece. So it might help to leave them on the sprue right up until you're ready to put them on. Uh, that way you can make sure you're putting them all in the right place. Because as you can see, very specific shapes. And they're all really well done. Take a look at the clear part for this navigation beacon underneath. If you can see it, it will actually follow the curve of the dome. Here's a shot of the one on the other side. You can see there, it's raised up a lot to catch the light. There's even an indentation you could put a three millimeter bulb right up against the back of this clear part. Once again, you can kind of see it's curved to fit the dome to catch all that light and put it out into the bottom of the ship. I, I wish I'd noticed that before. I would have added another three millimeter bulb to put up right against this to push some light right out the bottom of the saucer. Uh, but with me doing a couple big five millimeters, I'm still pretty hopeful that this big side piece of on that clear part will catch enough light uh, to light up the beacon underneath. I also think there's two ways you can go on this. Uh, the way I did is I painted this entire surface first to its final coat, then I put the clear parts underneath. And when I'm cleaning up seams, uh, hopefully I won't interrupt that, but I could always mask things off right up to this bottom grid line that would mask off all the windows. And then I could airbrush this bottom seam while only affecting this bottom part while they'll be masked off. So I feel I can clean up the seams without interacting with this, these windows. The other thing you could do is you could leave out all the clear window inserts, except for probably those navigation beacons. You could paint all of this once it's assembled. The paint won't get through these tiny windows. And if they do, you could clean them up with an X-Acto knife. And then you could use some crystal clear, a little bit of Elmer's glue to fill in the windows from the outside. That's what I did with my Enterprise E when it comes to really those tiny windows, you could do that as well. But I chose to do the clear window inserts from underneath and I think that'll really help the lighted effect. All right, I think it's finally time to see this lit up. So first thing we have is we have that red clear part. We have light blocked almost all of it, except for the red part that goes underneath and the part for the light to actually shine in from the LED. So let's get that in place. All 
I imagine we'll have to do some more light blocking on that piece when we get a little closer to being done. Here's our green piece. Same thing. You can see the little beacon is left clear green. The rest of it has been light blocked with gunmetal. And an opening right back here where you still have the clear green. And let's get that in place. And LEDs glued in right for those. Now there is no clear part for these holes. So on this light test, those will still be lit. I might leave it that way. Otherwise you can put like a little piece of foil tape behind it or a piece of foil tape on top of this LED to make it just a light block, a light box for the impulse engine. Let's get our wires pushed down this hole. Those will eventually go down a pylon. And this really is made for lighting. There's holes and channels for everything. Let's put our five millimeters up into the dome. And talking about this being made for custom lighting, there is a little wall on most pieces. So there's a wall behind this. Uh, so light blocking should be pretty darn easy. There's our platform assembled. And I'm just gonna tape these in place right now since this will not be our final assembly. All right, we just have our LEDs taped in place to light up the dome. I've snapped the bottom on the nacelles. All right, and right there, you can see that it's very easy to just see all the way through and push this through those channels made for the wires. All right, we've got all the lights for the nacelles, the platform and the saucer in place. Uh, and we've got most things dry fit right now. Let's take a look at this for the first time lit up. There are lots of things I'm really happy about right now. And we knew this would be an easy lighting task because everything is very open. Uh, there's pre-made channels and there's not too much to light, uh, but the navigation lights on the nacelles, uh, those really turned out wonderfully. Looks like I can do another, uh, coat of the clear green and clear red on the inside to bring out those colors a little bit more uh, but that is very nice and very easily done any seams down here on the bottom will be far enough away from those lights i don't really need to worry about messing up the finish on those and the five millimeter leds uh, absolutely enough to light up all of these dome windows i think that turned out very nicely. I am doing a warm white, which looks a little more yellow on camera than it is on real life. And underneath, you can see the light piping really does its job. That clear part next to the cargo bay really does capture light. Uh, so it lights up underneath. And you can see that even when it's under the bright lights, you can still see that that is lit up. And of course, the lower saucer lights there. Another navigation beacon that's doing well. And speaking of the navigation beacons, uh, you can see that clear part here is pushing enough light out to that red light on the bottom and the green one on the other side. So the light piping working out very well right there. Here's our lit impulse deck. And there's no clear part or insert for these holes. So if you want those blocked off, you'll have to put your own piece of plastic there or your own piece of foil tape um, otherwise those will end up looking lit up as well. And I will have to do some more light blocking on these parts. Uh, you can just see a little bit of green is shining through in places where I don't want it. And same thing on the other side, you can just see in those cracks and crevices, a little bit of red is shining through. Well, I thought I was done with the video for today, but I've decided to go back and make a handful of changes to the lighting. Uh, just to give a better representation of this kit. So the first thing I did is I put a strip of clear white plastic uh, behind these holes. Uh, so, and you can see I've done an additional layer of light blocking across this entire back part. Uh, now that's a real thin piece of white plastic. So we'll probably get a little bit of white light back there, but not like the, the big glowing light we had a little bit ago. I have also right down here, you can see I've put a tiny bit, a tiny strip of a uh, light diffusing material. This is just kind of some glass protective wrap. So hopefully that'll clean up the back a little bit and hopefully clean up a little bit the light blocking or the light leaks that we had on these parts. And I've also gone ahead and I've put 
those extra two three millimeter light bulbs along the front here. And the thing is, I really like to review the features they put in this kit. So if they put in these big clear parts that are clearly meant to have a light shining on them to provide the navigation lights, let's do that. Let's put a light in there just like the makers intended and see what that looks like. Uh, you can also see that around all the parts that are red and green for the navigation lights, I've done um, some big gloss clear red all the way around it. Hopefully they'll give it some deeper color and make it a tiny bit dimmer uh, to really make those navigation lights look a little bit bolder. And finally, I did switch out the warm white LEDs that were in the saucer for cool white LEDs. Um, I just thought they looked a little too yellow. So let me put the kit back together with these handful of changes and let's look at it again. All right, here is lighting Attempt number two. So yes, I like the cool white windows a lot more. Um, the navigation lights are not nearly as overwhelming. They are still lit up, uh, but they're more just kind of a bold color. Let's look at the navigation beacons. Yeah, big difference there isn't there. Um, we'll have to do a, light blue, a little bit of light blocking on the bottom of the saucer. Um, you can even see when it's under the bright lights, it is still glowing. We'll have to do a little bit of light blocking there, uh, but the light piping is absolutely working on both the bottom navigation beacons and the one on the saucer. Yeah, you can see uh, not as much under the bright lights, but you can definitely see those are lighting up pretty darn well. And remember, it's not assembled yet. I, I think I'm still going to have to do something with these. It's a warm LED behind it, uh, but I'm really liking the impulse engine. I think that looks great. I think we have finally fixed uh, the light leaks that were on these parts. Yeah, I think as long as I fix this, I think I'll be able to seal up the top of the saucer. And I'm, I'm really glad I took the extra time today to make those improvements to the lighting. I, I like it a lot more now. So if I haven't said it yet, I love that this is made for custom lighting. It's absolutely fantastic that I don't have to mask off windows, that I don't have to cut my own windows, that I don't have to cut my own paths, that they've built it with the light piping for the navigation beacons. I, I think it's just done incredibly well and it was very easy to get it to this point with the top half of the ship lit. We'll still have some lighting to do in the bottom of the ship, but that should be a lot easier than what we've done so far. So that's it for this video. The next video will hopefully be finishing the build and painting it and decaling it. We should have that video out in about the next week, but thank you guys uh, for following the channel. Thank you to Round 2 and Polar Lights for letting me work on this review copy. Thank you guys very much for following the channel, and we'll be back soon.